Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bish's RV and I am pumped to finally get my hands on one of these. I've been at two of our sister stores that had the Grand Design 310 GK Solitude. They were both sold out and I've got two of them sitting here side by side, one with each refrigerator. So you're going to get to see what the two different refrigerators look like. One being gas electric two-way, one being residential. Um, the, uh, this floor plan is that rank and file, everybody makes a triple slide fifth wheel like this, where you've got opposing living room super slides on an island, and then like a, a queen or king bedroom with like washer dryer prep. So why am I recording another one? And the answer is because they all do it a little bit different. And having different versions of the same floor plan from different manufacturers allows me to, to more effectively offer you comparison information. So if you want to compare this to say a Pinnacle, a North Point, uh, uh, a reflection, an eagle, a cougar, a, a ton of different things. There's a lot of guys that make a floor plane like this. So this is that good comparison point right here. So what are we getting into solitude? Uh, you're getting a wider body that most fifth wheels who make this floor plane do not. You're getting six point auto leveling that only some other brands uh, that you know make this layout have. You're, you're going to get a couple differences. Now they all have their high and low points. And uh, by the way, this is not an S class. This is the full solitude. This is where they say, we're not gonna be casual about this anymore we're going all in brother we're go we're, we're totally giving you the plush kind of luxury features right here um and uh i i'm really excited you know this is my first full solitude i'm really excited to hear what you folks think about this and if there's a specific model you'd like to see maybe i'd have a chance to capture one of those also a little housekeeping note before we get started and then we'll get going i apologize so grand design is a company that has really earned a stellar reputation for providing just really good after sale support to their customers. It's fantastic what they've done. Um, however, they have a policy that restricts what I and what we as Bishes can do for you in terms of publishing pricing. They don't let us do it. They literally do not let us. I can't, uh, first of all, pricing changes constantly, which is why normally I say, there's a link in the video description, blah, blah, blah. But in the case of Grand Design, we really can't publish much more than MSRP. Unfortunately, in the case of a grand design, I do have to ask you to contact our team for pricing and availability. That sucks. That's not how I want to do things, but I do stuff by the book, and that's how she's got to be. Good news is, it's a beautiful rig. We got a lot of fun to cover. Let's get going. So when we're in a case like this, where we have an RV with a floor plan that everybody and their brother makes, what it lets me do is really showcase where it's different and where it stands out instead of where exactly it's the same. Um, for instance, one of the major things I talked about here is we're wide body. We're 100 inch wide body. And I tell you what, it feels nice here in the living room. It opens the space up nicely, as do the huge plethora of door side windows. Plethora being um, one of the adjectives that I learned to use when I was, you know, writing papers for high school and college so that, you know, I could, they're like, well, you have to write 4,000 words. Well, if you start embellishing things with an amazing amount of uh, adjectives, well, you start being able to do those 4,000 word reports a lot more quickly and easily. <laughs> little, little life hack from old Uncle Josh right there. But the thing looks and feels huge. Part of what's doing that for us is the fact that this is a completely carpetless um, living area here. And notice how the slide out is using the same lino as the main floor. That is my personal favorite way that manufacturers do things like that. Um, it, it just l opens everything up. It makes it look and feel cleaner, nicer, lighter, brighter. Um, since this is a wide body rig, uh, they were able to give us a three adult seater sofa and still maintain a little bit of a side stand on either side with household and USB outlets over there. Now, um, if we uh, look above that, this is an area that I, I, I have a bad habit of missing. Taking a look at all the storage up there, um, this is of course all pocket screwed cabinetry, hardwood cabinet doors. I'm gonna get you a little more up close and personal with the cabinetry in just a few minutes here. You may have also noticed how you've got blackout roller shades all the way around in here. Um, <coughs> pardon me, oh gosh. I literally choked on thin air. <coughs> pardon, geez, oh Pete. Okay, oh, all right, well I think I'm not gonna die. What I was gonna get at, is in this class, it has become almost traditional to see day and night roller shades, but my understanding is there's been a little bit of a silent shortage on that. We haven't heard as much about that. Now, when you look up here, sometimes you hear me talk about whisper ducted air, and if you don't see the square, you don't hear the air. Um, I've been in Grand Designs with the air running. They are nice and quiet. They're using a Coleman Q-Series quieter air conditioner. It's also power saving and um, easy startup. So that, uh, you know, again, you don't need a big hefty, hefty, hefty generator to run those things necessarily. 
Could it? Sure. Do you necessarily need that? No. And those are 15,000 BTU air units. When they are on like quiet running mode, it does stay nicely quiet in here. If you crank it up hard, you can make them Katy Perry roar a little bit, of course, though. Um, we're looking at a Televator over here. Uh, uh, you know, kind of hidden behind the electric space heat and fireplace. And as you saw in our little floor plan in a flash, you can pop that sucker up right there and you can enjoy entertainment directly across from your theater seating. And it's not mounted up so high that it feels like a neck wrecker. You know, using that window as a reference point right there. Um, what is your preference, by the way? Neck, uh, no, not, not neck wrecker. Nobody likes that. What is your preference in terms of televator? versus swing out TV. My personal preference is swing out TV with storage behind. I know that I lose a window when I do that, but I like the idea of being able to pivot the TV over here and enjoy a more direct viewing angle if I'm lounging out here on that sleeper sofa, or even if it's not in sleeper mode, just in daytime kind of function mode. That's something that I personally enjoy. Um, but if you're going to do a televator, I do think they did it really nicely over here. Um, with the way that the countertop level changes, gosh uh, forbid <laughs> um, there's any sort of uh, spills over here from the kitchen, the entertainment is up. You're not going to have kitchen soup going down into your electronics or anything like that. And speaking of this kitchen, look at this big, beautiful symmetry kitchen. Montana, Cedar Creek, Solitude, they seem to be getting very good about this, and I am here for it. Got that big insignia four burner stovetop and it's actually large enough that you can get a couple big pots and pans on there at the same time. And that is a larger oven as well with a little bonus drawer below, but we will come back and open all that stuff up in a minute. Um, if you're shopping, you might go, wait a minute, what's the difference between this one and the one that has a dash R at the end of the model number? That's what we're in right now, residential fridge, whereas the other one is a gas electric two-way fridge. That's really it, that's the only difference is just the uh, the refrigerator selection that you're getting in the RV. Both are available, gas, electric, and residential. Once again, just monstrously maximum sized windows over here, which is something I really enjoy. And where that carpetless thing really becomes obvious is over here in the dining space. You know, it's got that little extension leaf if you want it. Um, by the way, something that's not painfully obvious, a couple of those chairs can actually fold up and get out of the way. And when you put those two chairs away, man, it opens up the space in here. Nothing says you even got to bring them, you know? By the way, that is a nice big tall walk-in slide. Those entry doors over there, they're about six and a half foot tall. So you can see how the slide ceiling is actually slightly bigger than that door. It's approaching seven foot, not quite there, I don't think. This island though, oh, this island in the stream, holy cow, man. The only thing it's, it, it, first of all, it's big. And even when the sink is open, you have good prep space on either side. And it's slightly asymmetrical. And I'll tell you why in just a second. First of all, we got what I lovingly refer to as the sparm sink. Kind of a split farm sink. What do you think about that, by the way? But down here, this is the reason it's a little bit asymmetrical. I think it's that side. Um, it's prepped and ready if you want to add an RV dishwasher to this RV. And note too, you've got some easy reach outlets down here with that. I, I like the little accents going on under the kitchen sink. Nice little wastebasket space or two or big pots and pans. And we got plywood drawers down to the floors here, ladies and gentlemen, which is good because those are going to probably be your primary drawers in this kitchen space. Um, by the way, not at all related to the kitchen. I just happened to spot it. You see a heat vent coming off the side of the island. Not only are we carpetless, but we are ventless flooring. And frankly, I'm going to give Grand Design credit for being the ones that um, have really uh, pushed a lot of manufacturers to changing to that. There are significant benefits to floor ducted heating. It provides a little more even heating, although Grand Designs have done a fine job of passing their hot, cold camp testing. Um, but uh, it, you might get a little warm or cold spot. You might still want to wear a pair of slippers or something like that, but hey, no big deal. Little central vac hookup over there and tiny little shoe garage under those steps. And uh, what's the central vacuum without the electric dustpan? Dust that way, you know what? You don't got to worry about busting out the old manual dustpan, which only likes to do a sort of good job sometimes. Now, this area right here, um, you'll see it change a little bit. They make a couple variations of this living room, some a little bit bigger than others. Um, this being their, their, I think their shortest full solitude. 
They didn't have quite as much room to go totally bananas right there. But I don't know. I think this kitchen is more than sufficient. And we, uh, we're not even done yet. Because remember, you always have your choice between the, uh, the Dash R residential fridge and an 18 cubic foot gas electric two-way fridge, which is a four-door. Um, the question might be here, how travel accessible are they? And if you hang with me a little bit, I'm going to open everything up and show you that stuff in road mode before we step outside. And here's a shopping pro tip. This is something no one's ever going to tell you. If you're, if you're at a dealership and you're shopping various RVs, when the salesperson is blowing all that hot air, just turn that big vent fan on. <laughs> that, by the way, does have a rain sensor. And down here in the Symmetry Kitchen, we do have a convection microwave as well. Uh, I, I love all the space around here, and it's kind of funny. I, you know, I, I get kind of on autopilot sometimes. Earlier, I think I said, oh, nice place for a wastebasket, blah, blah, blah. You don't need that place to be uh, a wastebasket, because they already include two of them for you. Or... You could maybe use one for garbage, one for recycling. I don't know. However, whatever works for you a little bit. I told you a tiny drawer there below the oven, but a big oven. And over here, it seems kind of weird that they're giving us drawers behind a door. But did you know that it's because it allows you to put bigger stuff in it? And you might be going, well, what do you mean by that? Well, let me get this out of the way. Take a look at this. This is a little RV design thing. So this drawer can't have anything taller than where that rail is right there, right? Well, this drawer doesn't have that restriction that you can put taller stuff in this drawer as long as it doesn't hit the bottom of that drawer right there. That right there, that is why manufacturers sometimes do drawers inside of doors. Now, I don't mind drawers and doors. What I dislike is when that's the only thing I get because sometimes I just want to have one reach, grab my fork, spoons, knives, close it. I don't want to have to go through multiple steps and as dumb as that sounds, Frankly, folks, if you're seriously considering shopping for a Grand Design Solitude, we are most likely already discussing only first world problems as it is, and we should consider ourselves a fortunate people, that is for sure. Kind of like the way I consider myself lucky to be with my wife. I might crack some jokes about her, but I ain't ever getting that lucky again. Now, I realize there's a couple things you can't see or I didn't show you over here as we're heading upstairs to the bathroom. First of all, right inside the door, but hidden away nicely, we have our master control panel. So you have a physical button for all like your control stuff, but you've also got a full LCI one control suite over here um, that, you know, your slides, awnings, lights, all that stuff can be operated from here or off your phone. So you've got a couple options there. And I realized I didn't really show you the outlets uh, that are, you know, under the overhead cabinet space up here. Just don't want you to miss a thing like Steven Tyler. Now, if you'd asked me, does this use the big fan or the little fan in the bathroom? I would have lost this bet. I, I would have been, I would have just basically assumed that a big RV like this would have had the bigger fans just like you have in the kitchen up here in the bathroom usually what you're when you're in this segment you have that so i guess folks uh again i'm willing to show you the good with the bad obviously because i had to go out of my way there to show that for you but if that is a deal breaker for you we can take care of that in the shop before you take the rv home so little things like that if if you know i call it screwdriver work if that's a, something we could slap on there for you before it leaves eh, don't let that hang you up. Just call our team and say, hey, I need one of those bigger fans in the bathroom. If that's what you need, chances are we can make that happen. Just, just a little food for thought for you. The good news is the rest of this bathroom is pretty darn great. I will say it is a little limited for like towel storage and whatnot. Remember where there was that like um, LED accent light above the pantry in the living room? This is the back side of that. And this is the pantry over there, that's what's occupying that space. But as we come down here, something I, I wanna tell you, like I can deal with the fan because that can be fixed. But you know what can't be fixed? Moving a wall. So the fact that this has that wider body, giving this thing a bigger bathroom with more hip and shoulder room, if you are a big booty Rudy, uh, you are going to fit on here just fine. And notice they still don't have floor vents in here, um, you know, potentially catching Dripping coming out of the shower or other things. We'll just move on from there. 
Solid surface countertop in here and stainless sink, just like we saw in the kitchen. Pretty standard medicine cabinet, nothing to write home about there. But this is a sharp one-piece shower. Um, I like the little bit of texture to it. You notice how it's a nice, easy step, and you've got that 300-pound rated um, teak seat, by the way, in case you need to sit down. But if you need to stand up, stuff gets out of your way. What I like about this, though, a lot of RV showers don't give us actual places to put things like our soaps and body washes. This one does. And what do we call this shower head? What's the HGTV term for that? Somebody the other day called it the rain shower, which I like the name, but is that what it's called? I don't know. The good news is you've got some excellent head clearance in this thing. I'm about 6263 for reference, by the way. Now, when you wake up in the morning, you look forward, or if it's late at night and you're catching up on the nightly news or just watching a little TV, uh, my wife and I are currently, this is going to sound funny, we're just now working our way through Game of Thrones little by little. I think I'm on like season four right now. Um, kind of funny watching this thing when all the spoilers are already out there. But that's your view from the bed. And guys, I'm going to tell you something. For a factory mattress, this does not suck. I'm actually very pleasantly surprised uh, with the, the quality of the bedding on this. Now, Bedding is something that is very personal and subjective, but I found it very, very comfortable. You've got that same extra tall ceiling all the way through this uh, bedroom, by the way. And remember, I said it's stackable washer dryer ready. That is actually going to be uh, located in the middle of the front closet at the deepest part of a nose cap, which is a really smart design decision, I think. First time I saw that was years and years ago with Cedar Creek, but I, I you know, it's still cool that people are doing it. The underbed storage here is different, though. What do you think about this? So... If you want to be able to like sit down and get a little bit closer to put on a pair of shoes, you can, but it's also, it is still storage and it's basically just like a drawer. It just slides and glides away, which is kind of cool. Um, right here, we are looking at the, uh, the king bed, but there is uh, a queen available. What is nice is because kings are so popular, they do a good job of leaving a decent amount of space here. There's household and USB outlets right on both uh, bedside stands. That being said, this is a very deep bed slide. Let me get you over here on an angle so you can discern that a little bit better. If you are a CPAP user, you are probably going to have to come up with some kind of little stand that you're going to put beside the bed over here. Power is not a problem. But it is going to have to kind of, you're going to have to run your Darth Vader mask up uh, to your head there a little bit. One of the things that's very cool, though, about this having that bigger, deeper bed slide is it, just giant breeze windows uh, around that thing. And they all have that same uh, blackout roller shade that we saw earlier. Um, you know what? I think we're good. Let's uh, go check the road mode downstairs, shall we? Because, you know, bedroom and bathroom access with a door side hallway like this is, it, it's like my cousin Ricky, guys. It's a no-brainer, basically. Um, by the way, here's a cool look at how those chairs ship for transit. I got those all strapped down for you. Um, but refrigerator access. It has that big giant island, and it gets in the way a little bit, but you can still pretty much get in here. Now, you might have noticed we jumped from the Dash R to the standard model with a gas electric two-way fridge. Once again, they're both available, and I had a chance to showcase that for you. But um, remember the residential refrigerator. It the, the freezer is down below. I think you might have a little bit of difficulty getting to it. But in either case, you should basically be able to get to the fridge stuff, which I think traditionally is the biggest thing you need if you're going to make a travel stop. And if you appreciate the way that we take the time to, sh you know, show you this stuff and close it all up, make sure you hit that like button to demonstrate your appreciation for road mode. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. And um, hit the snooze alarm one time and uh, treat yourself. <laughs> so first of all, taking a look at the big drop frame storage compartment. You notice over here we're on the driver's side, by the way, not the door side. You've got that powered cord reel up there which looks like a battle bots drum spinner you know because that big 50 amp cord down there that is a big chunk of copper it gets awful kind of heavy and sometimes it's nice to not have to do the heavy lifting on that thing um although you know just like you've done there you could totally take the cord off uh, uh as required which you're going to obviously need to to plug power into the rv i don't even know why i felt the need to say that look at the package doors on here though 
This is brilliant. This is just somebody looking at it thinking, huh, eh, I could do that better. One door flips up to get it out of the way to the, the docking center wet bay. The other door magnet locks to the side so it's not flipping in the breeze, which out here with all this crazy wind in Iowa, I'm sure appreciating they really did a nice job of that. Six point hydraulic auto leveling and look at the depth of the bed slide. Look at it compared to the kitchen slide. It dwarfs the kitchen slide. Which one of the seven dwarfs would it be? I don't know, maybe slidey? <laughs> um, 100 inch wide body platform on the Solitudes. Uh, that is four inches wider than a standard eight foot body fifth wheel. And you can see it, you can feel it, every single room in the RV. You just enjoy that extra space that you get from one of these. Um, up front here, the uh, More Ride pin box in More Ride Blue. Yes, Jayco, they say that's Jayco Blue. Jayco also, to be fair, uh, they are the company that gave More Ride the paint code that they use, so that actually kind of technically is Jayco Blue. <laughs> Up front, uh, this is the standard front end on this. It's just wide open for storage, although if you notice, it is perforated. There's punch outs. You can um, outfit this gen prep or with a generator. I've just got a battery box in it right now. And a couple things up front here. These are all factory uh, set up for dual batteries, which is uh, going to be kind of a nice thing. Um, this is solar prepped in its base form, but they make it very easy. Uh, they actually run wiring down here to the batteries. All you need to do is just get the charge controller and then uh, you know put your, your panels on the top and you're good to go. They do so much more prep work. A lot of times solar prep in the RV industry means, oh, we put a pu uh, plug on the roof and then we ran a wire kind of somewhere down into one of the walls and you can find it. Well, Grand Design's done a little bit more here, you know? Good gravy, look at the door side windows on that thing. It just floods the slide. That is awesome. That is where I want my windows right there. And just absolute maximum patio awning coverage on this as well. To be fair though, this entry door being right next to an awning arm, if it's raining, you're gonna get spritzed in the face. But the problem is there's really no other way to do it. There's no other place that like you can hide or, or move the entry door because to the right of it is steps and to the left of it's a slide. So if that's a deal breaker for you, hey, we got it out of the way. And if it's not de a deal breaker for you, let's keep on rolling. Um, the uh, central vac point does have a, uh, a hookup out here in the pass-through, although this is a, uh, a you know a non-carpeted floor. And I'm gonna give them serious credit up here by putting the battery disconnect up where cargo's not likely to smash it. Um, what was I gonna, oh yeah, earlier in what I call our little floor plan in a flash, you saw the David Blaine magic steps up here holding themselves out in midair, even in the crazy Iowa wind. And speaking of that, this is an anti-slam door, but they still go the extra mile and add that little magnet holdback right there on these solitudes. It's that kind of extra smart thinking, uh, you know, th that separates all these brands. Because, you know, on paper, if you just start comparing brand A to B to C, they read almost identically. It's the devil in those details that makes the difference. And this RV, by the way, is factory standard equipped with the TireLink TPMS, Tire Pressure Monitoring System. Uh, we are riding on Cooper tires, so they're using some pretty decent tires here. And uh, something Jayco does a lot too, laminated slide walls. And if you're ever worried about me thumping on it, first of all, I've got chicken hands. Look how skinny these little lady fingers are. These are keyboard fingers. These aren't tool fingers. Um, secondly, the sticker on the wall literally says to thump here. I just did what I was told. And look at this. I don't have to complain about the speakers on this one because they're actually mounted down uh, at head level where it makes more sense. Um, it's just, it's, it's again, it's those little touch details. It's a death by a thousand paper cuts that gets me excited about these. On the back, we have a uh, 3,000 pound towing hitch with 300 pound tongue limit. Um, ironically, structurally, a towing hitch and an accessory hitch are generally identical. The difference is this has safety chain hooks, it has a four-way wiring harness, and it has a lawyer's blessing to say, yes, you can call it a towing hitch. <laughs> yeah, it's really, that is pretty much the only difference right there. It's like, I've got a, uh, there's a, uh, like a hot dog plant near, near my home uh, back in Southern Michigan, and they have a traditional side and they have a kosher side. And I've got a friend that's worked on both sides and he says, you know, it looks like it's pretty much the same stuff to me that goes in them, but they have one guy bless them and the other side they don't. Now, I don't know how true that is or not. It's just kind of what I've been told. Now, under the belly here, they've done some really good things for us. Problem is, it's all enclosed. You can't see any of it, so you gotta just watch me talk about it, basically. 
Uh, long story short, yes, the underbelly, as you saw, is enclosed. It is forced air heated. They have a big furnace on these, too. Uh, so if you are going to be cold camping, you're going to burn propane, but you're going to be able to keep those tanks and yourself warm. Also, 12 volt tank heater pads standard on all these now, and uh, radiant barrier layering through the floor, up the nose, across the roof, over the river, and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. Or we could go up to the roof. And we have Grand Designs located at several of our uh, facilities across the Bishes Network. Not every single Bishes store carries Grand Design, but a sister store can assist you. But this store has a huge selection, and that's appropriate because this is actually Iowa's number one dealer of Grand Design RVs, which uh, I think is pretty awesome. I think the the team does a good job here. Obviously, they they you know they know the product and they know how to take care of folks the right way. Now, Solitude's up here. We are roof solar ready. They've got a pretty robust solar package you can add to one of these if you are so inclined. Um, also, our uh, our big kitchen power vent fan right here. Um, it doesn't include a roof vent cover, which very few big luxury fifth wheels seem to, but at least it is prepped and ready for it with those little ears that are sticking up. So if you want to add one of those things, you can do that without screwing up your factory warranty. Um, if I'm being picky, I prefer white uh, shrouds on the ACs as opposed to black. It just helps them run a little more efficiently, but I've yet to talk to somebody who owns a solid dude who said that their air conditioner couldn't keep up because of those black shrouds up there. So obviously it's good enough, you know what I mean? It just tends to, uh, they tend to get sun faded and chalk out a little bit uh, more easily because they soak up more of that solar radiation. Kind of like Captain Planet and Birdman. Birdman! Remember Birdman? Oh, oh yes! Anyway, um, what are we looking at right there? That is a roof attic vent because this whole roof construction that I'm walking on basically will turn into a hot box and uh, you, need a, you need a place for that to air out. Now in home construction, that is absolutely required. But in RV construction, builders don't have to do that. So it's actually kind of cool that they are doing that from the factory level just to help it breathe and operate a little more effectively. And actually what's kind of cool, if you go down to the most basic travel trailer Grand Design makes, the Explorer uh, Transcend right over there, they do the exact same roof fence on those things. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to carefully climb my way down here because if I open an umbrella right now, I might be recording this in Iowa, but I'd finish it in Kansas, Toto. And you bet I'd be blessing those rains in Africa before I was done. Another thing I can only describe to you because you can't really see it is what they're doing kind of around the exterior seal points of any laminated Grand Design RV. Instead of a uh, like a butyl tape, they use a mylar tape, which long story short, butyl tape just like dries out and then eventually the exterior sealant that you see on the RV is the only seal on the RV. You don't realize when they're first built, there's actually an interior and an exterior seal. There's two points. They use a different kind of material. It's a little more spendy, but it doesn't just dry out and rot out over time. And I'm not going to tell you it makes anything like leak proof, but around any high stress joint, around slides, around roof to wall transitions, around nose cap seams, they use that mylar tape as just one extra longer lasting uh, weather barrier, basically. It's a very cool thing they're doing there. But you know, there's a lot of great brands out there and there's a lot of great fifth wheels and on paper, you know, they have all these awesome qualities. But how do you know you're, you know, like who are you really partnering up with here? That's one of the things that uh, Grand Design does very well. Again, they have some of the very best uh, support in the industry, both to their dealerships and their final owners. Uh, like for example, um, they have a, uh, a 48 hour response policy for warranty claims. As someone who's been in it for a minute, I can tell you, I've sat there looking at the, the status update on a warranty claim from certain brands before for weeks and nothing happens. Then you finally call it like, oh, well, yeah, okay, we'll take a look at that. They just, uh, they just have more administration. They have more people on the inside of the company, more infrastructure and support. Now, you're paying for that a little bit. But the fact is the support's there, you know? So if uh, you're looking to, like on a big fifth wheel like this, you're looking to make your last purchase, they might be a, uh, a good option for you, something that's going to be there. If you have questions, concerns long-term, take care of you. Now, if you have questions, concerns for me, feel free to leave a comment uh, down there. Uh, again, I will leave you a link in the video description to see if we have these available. Unfortunately, with Grand Design's um, policies, we can't really publish anything but MSRP. So uh, uh, apologies for that. 
I really wish I didn't have to advise you to call for pricing on these, but that's just the way things are. And we play by the book and I play by the book and that's how you go. At least, you know, because the thing is, if we were willing to break the rules here, imagine what we'd be willing to do otherwise. You know, you got to have principles. And once you give up your integrity, you never give it back. Um, sorry, I got way off topic here this morning. Thank you for watching. When you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and go fishing, everyone.